Hey guys, and welcome back to today's video. I hope you guys are doing great. If you are new here, hi, my name is Dana. I am a homeschooling mama to a kindergartner, a preschooler, and then a very active 16 month old. <laughs> but as you can tell from the title down below, I wanted to take you along with me as I go about our homeschool morning, kind of what that looks like for our family. My preschooler and kindergartner are 21 months apart, so they're actually pretty close in age, and so they're almost at the same level, but not quite. My preschooler does go back and forth, so a couple of months ago she was more into just doing the actual like hands-on play so we would do handwriting and stuff with chalk outside and especially when it was warmer outside but just recently honestly probably just the beginning of last month so in the beginning of October she really really just wanted to sit down and do workbooks with her brother so while he was doing his either handwriting for copy work while he was doing his language arts lesson or his math or something she wanted to be at the table the entire time that he was at the table so even though her quote unquote busy work, or I should say workbook stuff, wasn't enough to keep her at the table for a long time, she wanted to be at the table for as long as her brother. And for him, honestly, he's just in kindergarten, so doing his language arts, his math and handwriting, really we could get it all done in under 45 minutes. So I wanted to share with you kind of how I switched their subjects back and forth so I can work with them both at the same time without getting overwhelmed, especially with the busy baby who also wants to feel included. So let's go ahead and get into it. So one thing that really works for me as a teacher is to rotate their subjects based off of how teacher intensive it is for me. So for example, I always start out my preschooler, if I'm working more intensively with my kindergartner, I will start her out with something very simple that doesn't require much from me. So I always give her either basic handwriting or things to trace, things to cut out, something to keep her busy because she wants. she's at that point now where she really wants to do the work, she wants to be included she wants to learn right alongside with her brother so I will give her those types of like little things that I can just guide her with the first couple letters and then she can kind of take over from there and that keeps her busy for you know those five to ten minutes while I'm reading the instructions and stuff with my kindergartner so less teacher intensive while working on a more teacher intensive thing with my kindergartner I have tried the whole, let's both do language arts at the same time, let's both do math at the same time. It just does not work for, does not work for us, especially since they both want to do it together now. Like I have to switch it, otherwise I get really overwhelmed because both of them are teacher intensive and I can't do both reading and letter sounds and everything at the same time because they both honestly, like I said, require 100% of my attention. So that was a rabbit trail. But while she is working on her letter tracing, I then will 100% of the time, if she's busy and content, I try to do my kindergartner's reading lesson first thing for him because for our family and just for him, he it's the most important thing right now. Um, he knows how to do his letters right now. It's just working on the fine penmanship and things like that. Um, but right now, it's more intensive with the actual reading lesson. We're in the depths of the reading lessons and he's doing great. We are now able to pick up where we left off on his good and the beautiful uh, kindergarten curriculum. I have shared this before that it advanced very quickly and so we substituted by just honestly reading all of the little books and he became more fluent and more comfortable and now we're back into doing the actual curriculum but it is you know teacher intensive as far as me being there guiding him through it reading him the instructions and things like that so typically <laughs> After he is done doing his actually busy reading work, and after we went ahead and we've done all of the reading assignments for the day and everything like that, I will go back to my preschooler and I will get, we've been doing learning how to read in 100 easy lessons. She really likes that. She likes the concept of following little errors with her finger. I'll give you an insert here of kind of what that book looks like. Um, but she is really, really enjoying it, and she's actually taking interest in learning how to read and learning how the letters blend together. Even though she can kind of blend a few of them together already, we're kind of formally kind of starting to introduce that to her, and she seems to be really, really been enjoying it. So, <laughs> well, I will typically flip-flop that. I will work with Ellie on her very, very beginning reading and her letter blends, whether that be her language arts little pre-K curriculum that I have, whether that be the preschool binder folder that I have, I'll insert a clip here of the binder that she really, really likes. I've had this binder for about probably two years, maybe not quite two years, probably a year and a half now. 
of just the little preschool activities that you can reuse over and over again. So I'll do that with her and it's a great, great thing for her to do because it's introducing, you know, obviously the more advanced beginning sounds with the lowercase letters and things like that. So I will work with her while Oliver is doing the less intensive thing like that is when he will switch to doing his copy work and penmanship and things that he really doesn't need my guidance for. And I always make sure he knows like if you do have any questions, mommy is like literally right here. <laughs> So if you do have a question about a letter or a number or anything, we can do that. But it's just simple penmanship. Um, and I believe penmanship is really important as well. So he does his copy work and everything like that. Um, he also really enjoys doing the Draw Right Now book. I have shared this before many times on my channel, but oftentimes while I'm working with Ellie, he will get out the Draw Right Now book, pick an animal to trace or to color, and learn how to draw it. And then just for copy work, he will write the sentences that is underneath that picture, and he loves doing it that way. So as I mentioned, it's flip-flopped. He is less intensive. My preschooler is more intensive. And then typically I'll go through that cycle about three times because for Ellie, she right now is really into doing numbers and she actually does like doing math. So then I'll flip off it again. And the last cycle of the day is typically I'll do math with Ellie, which is less intensive because right now it's just very basic math. She's counting things on the paper and then tracing the numbers and things like that. But it's not as teacher intensive, even though it does require some teacher instruction. And then I'll switch back to doing something more intensive with Oliver since it is penmanship. So I will open up his math book. Now his math book isn't very teacher intensive as far as teaching actually actual concepts, but there is a lot of reading in it. For math, for him, I do use the master books, uh, Math for Living Education. I do have more thoughts about it and our family's learning style, but I'll probably save that for another day. We do enjoy it, but I do save it for the end because there is a lot of reading involved for the teacher. The actual copy work and the actual like workbook stuff that the student does is very, very simple and basic. However, to get to that point of being able to do the workbook stuff, there is quite a bit of reading involved. But it's a really, really sweet story. I do like how it brings the story to life and the math to life because you start at the beginning of your math textbook. I'll insert a clip here for you and you go through the, the entire story. You follow these two little kiddos, Charlie and Charlotte as they live life on the farm with their grandparents and it's fun seeing them explore the different things and everything like that and my kiddos love the storyline okay, and the last thing I wanted to mention as well if you do have a busy busy baby <laughs> right now my little one is 15 months old and I have found the best way honestly to keep her happy when I am focused on my homeschooling for that 45 minutes and if she is maybe not quite ready for a nap but still kind of fussy I honestly just put her in the high chair at the table and include her in everything. Um, it makes a real difference for her, even if it means giving her a little snack while she's at the table. If I give her these little tiny books, we really like these little um, chunky books from Usborne. I'll see if I can insert a picture here for you. She loves looking at those. Perfect for little baby hands, and she loves feeling like she's included. And you know, who wouldn't want to feel like they're included instead of on the outs, you know? Anyways, I have found that just keeping her at the table with us, whether that be me holding her, which she would prefer for sure, or in the high chair with a snack or a book, like I said, she is much more happy and content that way than just crawling around on the floor wanting her little play buddies to come down and play, if that makes sense. So, but yeah, I hope that all made sense. Um, this is honestly just what works for our family. Honestly, rotating the kiddos on who gets the more teacher intensive lesson and then switching it off and go back and forth. I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here before it gets too long. But again, I wanna thank you for being here today. And I would love, love to have you join our family and you can do so by subscribing down below. But until our next video, you guys have a great rest of your week. Bye.